My name is Suzette Cooper Grindstaff, and I am from Marion, North Carolina. Oh, and I'm not working, um, spending time with my family. I'm Zeb Dowdle, and I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. Well, my perfect day is usually just hanging out with my friends and getting to spend time with my friends and uh, just enjoying their company. My name's Nancy Master Antonio. I'm currently living in Asheville. I'm originally from Rochester, New York. Happiness is being with family, and um, certainly my job means a lot to me. Since I became a nurse, if I can make a difference in somebody's life, even for a short period of time, that's very satisfying to me. I received my heart transplant in September of 1997, and I needed a heart transplant because there were so many different things wrong with it that I couldn't survive with the current heart that I had. I was 17, 18 years old whenever I lost sight in my left eye. I went officially blind. In 1999, um, I received a corneal transplant in my left eye. The doctor took the bandage off in his office. It was immediate. About 25 or 26 years ago, I was diagnosed with lupus, and I ultimately went into kidney failure and went on dialysis for about 15 months. If I stayed on dialysis, I think that at the time, they told me that there was like a 25% chance that I could live five years. And I ended up 15 months, so a little over a year on dialysis, and I kind of felt like there was a clock ticking. On any given day in our nation, there are over 100,000 people on the transplant waiting list. People like Zeb, Suzette, and Nancy. It's a daunting number, and it's growing every day. Every 10 minutes, a new person joins the list of those waiting for a life-saving transplant. Sadly, about 18 of them will die today, simply because the organ they needed was not available in time. A decision that you make today could change someone's life forever. One of the things that when we look at patients and how they die, a lot of patients die of heart failure, a lot of patients die of renal failure, a lot of patients die of chronic diseases which actually erode their organ function, not just of the primary organ, but lots of the other organs that, that become involved. So therefore, what we're looking for is a patient who unfortunately dies, but yet all the rest of their organs are fine. That happens extremely rarely. Less than 1% of patients die in those kind of situations. So it's almost not quite a needle in a haystack, but close. People register to become organ donors because they know that even in death, it's possible to help others. Often fear, misinformation, and myths around organ donation keep people from registering. One such fear is that in their moment of need, their care may suffer that the doctors will not do everything they can to save their life. The truth is, in fact, exactly the opposite. My responsibility is to take care of that patient who's in front of me. My responsibility is to do the best job I can and to marshal the resources necessary in order to take care of that patient. That means that if I need to consult cardiology or neurosurgery or whatever, that's what I need to do. If I need to take that patient to the operating room right away, then that's what I need to do. My primary focus is always to take care of that patient and try to do the best job I can in order to make that patient or to get that patient well. My number one uh, responsibility is to cure. And number two is to relieve pain and suffering. If I'm taking care of someone, they're always gonna get the, the best care that I can give. Another concern people express is that their own medical history might keep them from being a donor. Over the last 20 or 30 years, we have done a very, very good job at extending the people who are qualified, I guess, for donation. And it's impossible for a lay person to know whether they qualify or not. They really need to talk to an expert. So I suggest you register and let the experts make the decisions whether you can or cannot, depending upon what your health status is at the time of death. 
Registering to become an eye, organ, and tissue donor is a simple act with an enormous potential impact. The choice to donate life is an individual one, but the impact of that decision can change the lives of 50 people or more. Her heart went to an 11 year old. So it's like we lost a daughter in a way, but we gained one, you know? In my heart and in my mind, I just felt like if we could save someone else from actually going through that pain and that turmoil, why not do that? I think that is where part of the healing started. It was like that, that jump started us to be able to start healing. Like she always just helped everybody. And I used to always, I thought that was one of her special qualities. I always told her that, yeah. you know, I, you're, you're great with that. Never, never give up. Even though things might not be looking well for your family member, you can always save someone else. And you can find solace in that, because we have. It's, it's such a huge, overwhelming feeling. And I say gratitude, but it's so much more than that. Being an organ and tissue donor can, it can change life. It, in ways that you don't even comprehend. It's something so small to just say, yes, I'll be an organ donor when you're at the motor vehicle department, but it's so huge to those of us that receive the organs and our families that get to experience our life because we wouldn't still be here if not for those donors. As a human being, you're given a short period of time to help people. And on your last day of life, sometimes they're given an opportunity to help many people. The decision to donate life is one that is highly personal and generous beyond measure your choice can have an enormous impact on the lives of so many. Give joy, hope, and life to another. Go to DonateLifeNC.org today and register now to become an organ donor. Then, talk to your family and friends so that they know your wishes. You have the power to donate life.